You are listening to Keep Canada Weird, a weekly weird news roundup by the Nighttime Podcast. Handsome Aaron Airport. It's another wonderful night of keeping Canada weird, Mm -hmm. a job that maybe we were put on this earth to do. But before we do our job, what is that you have? Seven up, zero sugar. What do you got? Um, I'm back to what I'll call maybe my secondary staple. It is the no boats on Sunday, raspberry and watermelon vodka soda. Nice. I, uh, I even, you know, this segment of starting the show with what are we drinking? It's getting a little old because we drink the same stuff usually. I even went to a convenience store today being like, I'm going to buy like the most unique, unusual pop they have. So I have mm-hmm. something exciting to tell Aaron. Man, I was disappointed. They had nothing. They just had a bunch of different like cherry Pepsi, diet Pepsi, Pepsi Zero, Pepsi Original. Nothing cool. Yeah. So. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that the world has disappointed you. The world hasn't. The past week in Canadian news and events has been wild. We have a full card of unique, offbeat, unusual, unexpected, and surprising Canadian stories to break down. But as we always do, before we break down those stories, we got to hear from some members of the Keep Canada Weird Army. And I think they're going to come to your defense, the Keep Canada Weird Army. Last week, you got your your ears boxed by a listener named who, Diane who thought you were both a, um, both a little bitch and was suspicious that maybe you looked like a piece of shit. The listeners are not having it. Uh, here's a voicemail from an anonymous listener who wants to come to your defense. Hi, Jordan and Aaron. I want to keep my identity anonymous, but I am currently listening to last week's episode where Diane just left such a mean message for Aaron. I think every week how much I love Aaron. I think his dry sense of humor is hilarious. Um, I know he does identify um, with being a little bitch, just like Diane said, but I've had a little crush on Aaron Airport ever since I started listening. So, hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Anonymous? God. <laughs> Anonymous, stop. <laughs> uh, what do you think of that? <laughs> oh, that's that's nice to hear. As a, as a little bitch and arguably a piece of shit, um, I do enjoy hearing those things every now and then, but... Uh, yeah, I'm going to get Anonymous tattooed on my arm, probably, because um, now Anonymous and I are getting married, and it's official. Uh, I'm going to be Mr. Anonymous. <laughs> uh, so you you may be with Anonymous in that way, but we also have a listener named Mara who wants to come to your defense. Uh, I don't think there's any kind of romantic vibes in this voicemail, but mm-hmm. Mara, uh, I believe, is our best friend. We just may not have known it. Hey, Jordan and Handsome Aaron. This is Mara from Oklahoma again. I'm just going to start sending in a voicemail for every single episode ever because not only am I a top correspondent in the U.S., but I also have this really cool parasocial relationship with you guys where we're all best friends. Anyway, I'm writing in Mm. about, I think it was Diane's, message to Aaron her hate mail am I correct in Diane being the name of the lady who gave him a death threat for saying Reese instead of Reese's back but either way justice for Aaron airport and keep doing what you're doing Mara is one of the top correspondents in the United mm-hmm. States we have them all ranked and I think like last time I checked I think she was at like seven seventh so yeah she's up there for she's sure. up there yeah yeah because there's a lot of correspondence in the United States right now that we currently have employed through stickers and and badges so <laughs> uh, Mar- Mara asks is Diane, the same woman who uh, was not happy with your pronunciation of Reese, Reese's, that whole thing. No, that was a different listener. That was Elaine. And there was mm-hmm. no bad blood between Elaine and us. Uh, El- Elaine just keeps us honest. In fact, she sent us some beautiful art. You remember the collage? She I sent? do remember, actually. I was looking at that little piece of art, that uh, collage that she made me uh, recently. Yeah. And thinking about how nice it was and how yeah, happy so- and, and lucky I am to have it. Yeah, I don't think Diane is going to be sending you a collage, but 
Let never that just know. be it. I mean, that Reese's debate that we had, that I Elaine and I had, um, there was a point in time where I never thought I would get a collage from her, but mm -hmm. here we are. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to put the Diane issue away for a few moments, but I will say we are going to hear from Diane again tonight. I know a lot of people listening want to know if she heard the episode, her reaction to it. Uh, I don't want to do it right now because it will take over no. the rest of our conversation. So I'm just going to sit that aside for a minute. Sure. We got, Cause we got, we got a lot. We got to cook right through this. If Taylor Swift is in the news in Canada, we're going to talk about it. And yes, Taylor Swift is in the news in Canada again, not Taylor Swift specifically, but She's connected to this story. An Ontario woman is warning others after this woman was scammed out of $1,400 after trying to buy Taylor Swift concert tickets from someone th she thought was a friend on Facebook. Her experience is a reminder for how easy it is to fall for online ticket scams, especially when high-profile events like the Taylor Swift concert in Toronto is involved. Listen to this story. A post from a Facebook friend popped up advertising that she was selling four Taylor Swift tickets for November 16th. Andrea Accinelli wasn't in the market for tickets to Taylor Swift's heiress tour in Toronto this fall, but... Wasn't opposed to, uh, to buying some if they were a reasonable price, which they were. She says the unsolicited offer seemed like a pretty good one. So I asked her how much she was selling them for, and it was three fifty dollars each. She quickly decided to buy all four tickets on offer and engaged in an online discussion with the woman who said she had them. You know, once it's accepted and on, then I'll transfer the tickets. This was on August 18th, and it took forever. After a lot of communications online, Accinelli sent an e-transfer to the seller, $1,400, what turned out to be an expensive mistake. When somebody wants something, they might be a little bit more likely to overlook red flags that pop up. Days later, the seller emailed what looked like a ticket, but wasn't. Through Ticketmaster, it came out that they were probably not real, and she disappeared off Facebook. Situations like these are happening frequently as the Toronto tour dates get closer. These are risky times for buyers unfamiliar with the pitfalls of buying resale tickets online. Based on your experience, would you say to somebody? Well, I would say to somebody, make sure you get that person on the telephone, because if they don't want to take your phone call, they probably aren't legit. Uh, but just make sure that it's real and don't send e-transfers. She filed a complaint with York Regional Police, but the scammer or scammers will be nearly impossible to locate. Accinelli wanted to warn others and caution about buying based on emotion. I mean, I'm not going to starve because I've lost $1,440, but at some point she might, she might con somebody else who won't recover from this. Police around the GTA have been warning about this scam increasingly Hackers are getting into valid Facebook accounts to peddle these bogus tickets. If you pay out money, chances are you are not going to get it back. And if you buy from an individual you don't know, there's a high probability you're going to get burned. I think Taylor Swift tickets especially, I think we talked about this before. If you even write Taylor Swift or the word tickets on Facebook, bots just start appearing out of nowhere and trying to get you to buy tickets from them. A past episode we had, had the had Taylor Swift tickets, or Taylor Swift concert in the title. It was after she, I think when she, maybe it was an episode we did after she announced her tour. When I shared that episode, that episode on my Facebook page, I had like six bots show up trying to like, <laughs> I have extra tickets. Does anyone need tickets? I need to get rid of them. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, and in, in, in this news clip, she, the victim of the scam is being like referring to the scammer as she because the profile was a she, but it wasn't a she or a he. They were probably communicating with some bot that was programmed and used AI and everything else and just took hers and a bunch of other people's 1400 bucks. Don't buy Taylor Swift tickets on Facebook, people. No, no, I think, yeah, it's it's. It's complicated because you do feel bad for the person for losing their money and falling for a scam and it's but it, but on the other end of the coin it's like well I don't know this reeks of a scam to me from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So I do find it I do find it uh, difficult to believe that in this day and age with all of the information out there and all of the news stories and all of the the you know the media about all of these types of scams that are that are happening on a daily basis that people 
are still falling for them. Mm-hmm. And she says in the story, you know, when you want something really bad, you can overlook the red flags, but I don't know. It's the same is true for love, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you next thing you know, you fall in love with a bot. <laughs> uh, you know, having that in the news, it's a good reminder for uh, gullible people on Facebook to. Yeah. It's, it's great that it's in the them. news. Yeah, of course. Um, but I don't know. She was kind of bragging how easily she could lose $1,400 too. And yeah. she, she doesn't blink an eye at it. Yeah. Look at my refrigerator filled with food. Uh, a lot of people are going to be listening and they didn't see the news clip, but I also like that the reporter was outside of the Rogers Center, which is the stadium Taylor Swift is going to be performing at. So he was doing this news story like live outside of the Rogers Center. It just seemed inappropriate. That he was outside of the Rogers Center? Yeah. He was like, he isn't was, that where the concert is, though? Yeah, but if you're doing this like thing about the woman being scammed, you don't need to go report from where the concert's going to be in two months. You could just be at the studio. Just seemed you unnecessary. Could, but doesn't it provide a little bit of atmosphere because that's where the concert's going to be? And I guess so. I thought it was inappropriate. <laughs> inappropriate. Yeah, uh, I didn't uh, like it. What? What poor taste. The, the the reporter had broadcasting <laughs> outside of where the concert is going to be regarding the story about the concert. Um, speaking of poor taste, we have some stories coming up, a duo of stories related to neighbors who uh, exhibit poor taste in their neighborly actions. Uh, we're going to get to that in a second. Before we do any of that, let's hear from one other listener. Uh, People who listen to Nighttime regularly will recognize this voice because this is a voicemail from Linz, who's the host of the Dystopian Simulation radio podcast, and she provides the intro and outro voiceovers for Nighttime. Uh, Here's what Linz had to say. She also got pulled in to the conflict between you and Diane. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jordan. I was just listening to the voicemail from your disgruntled fan, kind of hater. Um, about Aaron being a little bitch and potentially looking like, I think it was a piece of shit. I can't remember exactly the wording, but it struck me that, um, it really struck me though, that like, um, unless I'm not aware of this, the nighttime listeners as a like fan base, I don't think they have a collective name, um, you know, like Taylor Swift, Swifties. So. I was thinking, like, maybe based on that voicemail, you could start calling your fans um, little bitches. Just a thought. But, um, yes, have a good day over in Canada. And bye. (laughs) Bye. What is the origin of the bye? That was from a voicemail. There was a voicemail a while back. Um, I can't remember how long ago, maybe six months ago or even a little longer than that. And whoever left the voicemail signed off by going, bye. And we just kind of chuckled at it. And then we laughed at it. And then every now and then somebody picks up on that and signs their voicemail off by going, bye. That is like a deep cut. That's some inside baseball humor. Yeah, but it's happened a few times so far. It has. Yeah. And yeah. Linza presents an option for, you know, a lot of listeners of podcasts will have like a name for the listeners like my I have friends uh, who host morbid their listeners call themselves the weird call themselves weirdos um mm-hmm. keep canada weird has the keep canada weird army the yeah. nighttime podcast i don't think there's an like a there's not really a name but i don't know if little bitches would be appropriate that would be tough to explain to yeah or pieces of shit <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, there's this woman named Diane, like to explain the background. No, it's very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In order to justify it. Yeah. But I actually don't endorse. Uh, no, no. I don't even like saying that word. So, it. yeah. How dare and we've you been think? saying it. And this is kind of, uh, you know, this has been complicated because the language, like Diane, has forced us into a language corner mm-hmm. since she appeared into our lives. So now what we had probably the cleanest, I think, the cleanest show on the internet, I'd like to argue. 
possibly and you know and then all this happens as we're trying to romance robin's donuts they listen and they're like what is this trash so well, mm -hmm. you want to just make the decision right now to stop saying it yeah yeah do you want to say it one more time and then stop okay i won't say bitch after this or a piece of shit okay and and yeah you you covered it so i don't even need to repeat it okay so you're worse than i am <laughs>
uh, seems to take some of their concerns to oh, heart. Yeah. And oh, I was I was impressed by him. He's like global news. Come on in. Here's come what's on going in, on. Give and... you a tour. You know, we're we're trying to address some of these issues and. We're working hard towards that, and the smell's not that bad. We take a bit of offense to that, but um, <laughs> and then the reporter chimes in, well, sometimes I hear it can be quite spicy. And it's like, well, what's what's spicy to you, you know? That that yeah. that's really depends on the person, I think. So I, that was probably the whole part of the conversation. They edited it out of the click out of the clip because they didn't get into all that, but I'm sure that happened. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought the, yeah, the owner manager character in this story was quite apologetic and is trying to address the issues. And I thought I uh, was handling it quite professionally. And, and uh, yeah, I think he should be the Canadian hero of the week. We should add a new segment just Ooh. for this man. I think we did that before we had a couple like hero or star of the week. No, I don't think we did, but maybe we talked about it before, but okay. I think, uh, so far our well, Canadian the, hero of the week is, is compost man, the compost manager. Uh, well, don't throw that award out just yet. We're going to hear from a couple of the people. I think you may be impressed with this other situation concerning awful neighbors in British Columbia. These people, I don't know if they will be heroes of the week, but they definitely got guts and balls. Uh, this is a, Again, last week, different part of British Columbia, the town of Oisayos. O S. <laughs> no, sir. Like, you tell me how you pronounce this. O S O Y O O S. Okay, let me look at it on paper here. One second. Osoyos. Osoyos. Okay. The town That's of what Oso I think. Okay, I'm going to go with it. The town of Osoyos, BC, found itself in a legal battle with sort of homeowners in their community. Six years ago, work started on a large home. And now, after six years of building and permits being extended, the home is still far from complete. And the owners that claim the set and the owners of this building claim the city's bylaws don't apply to them. Listen to this situation. A beautiful life in Osoyoos beckons many. It's hard to beat the sun, sand and those breathtaking views but when one couple decided to build their dream home here it turned out to be a nightmare for neighbors it's been awful actually to sit there and drive by there every day and to look at that it's an eyesore an eyesore that Topher has lived next to for six long years enough is enough it has to get something has to be done with it the town of Osoyoos feels the same way after renewing building permits for the Oleander Avenue property three times, toss in numerous complaints about the dilapidated state of the ramshackle build and persistent breaches of various bylaws and the only option left? Legal action in BC Supreme Court. We always want people to, to, you know, to build a home and have the place that they want to live. This one has taken far too long and there have been many interventions all the way along. Global News reached out to owners Murray and Kathy Bloom who said they were unwilling to comment at this time. Their defiance documented in a handwritten notice to the town of Osoyoos stating your presumption that your bylaws have any force or effect over the equitable owners of private property is incorrect and must be accompanied by contractual evidence. The Blooms threatening to charge the town $7,500 every time bylaw came onto their property and $25,000 for every hour they had to appear in court. But in this 14-page judgment, BC Supreme Court Justice Anita Chan found for compliance instead of the Blooms brand of bylaw defiance finding the homeowners in contravention of a number of the town of Osoyoos' bylaws. The judge gave the couple a choice, comply or have the house demolished at their expense. Either way, neighbors may one day look at the view without it keeping them up at night. That's a bit of a situation. That letter from the people building the home about, you know, the bylaws don't apply unless we have a contract. I'm going to charge you this amount if you come on our property. That just reeks of someone who spends way too much time on like the dark corners of the internet, reading about like COVID stuff or something. Mm hmm. I'm just, no one has 
answered the what I think is the main question is why is it taking them so long to build the house? Yeah. And and the city seems to be working with them because they did offer like a couple of, um, you know, extensions of permits and whatnot. But it's just, I guess, at a point now, it's only the framing that is done. This this building looks like it's like 15 or 20 percent done um, after six years. Yeah, I, I see why the people are upset. And it's and it's like looks like it's right downtown or whatever. It's surrounded by other homes. So to have this big, partially finished thing, it doesn't make sense for anybody involved. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's all boarded up and it's and it's definitely an eyesore, I agree. But I would think that 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 the the news outlet would have been able to get some more information as to We see, we why see. it's why six years. It seems like now it's 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 abandoned. Like they started building it, they've given up for whatever reason. Yeah, like maybe they ran out of money. Maybe they just want to screw with this, the town of Asoyos. But I have a feeling if I was the news reporter there and I heard of this whole thing with the bylaws don't apply unless we have a contract and you owe this and that if I come on my property, I'd kind of be thinking like, I don't want to mess with these people. But then again, it would be great TV to have them like spouting nonsense about Yeah, this stuff. yeah. Yeah, it seems it seems like a lot of unanswered questions again in a story like this and like maybe we could have some sympathy for these home builders if we knew the backstory more as to what complications Yeah. they were running into like we really want to finish the house. However, there's this this and this happening that is preventing us from doing that and now we're being harassed by the town. So then they Yeah. could flip the switch and become the victims in this story. Yeah, flip the script. Absolutely. Cuz it's they must want the house done. They spent a bunch of money getting They it started this far. this, yeah. They're I mean, they're paying property tax, I'm sure, I assume to own to own the land. So there, yeah, there's another side of the story that that report did not at all get into. And there's a whole other side of the story uh, about where they're living that it didn't get into. I believe they'd been, at least for a period of time, the home builders had been living on a trailer on the property, where, like on the site where this is being built. And there was also some like issue about can they be living on this trailer in this area. And I think there was, the city was like trying to get them like, kicked out of there like it make making it so they couldn't live in their like rv or motorhome or whatever it was so that's this whole situation just screams of uh a toxic relationship between the town and these home builders and i i have a feeling if you got to talk to everybody both people would probably make some good points i i hope anyway yeah yeah and i know in previous episodes i've been very hard on um people who leave homes abandoned because they can be a real hub for uh critters and rodents Mm -hmm. and and just wildlife antisocial and activity yeah yeah and yeah and just uh teenagers kind of getting involved in the in in the abandoned house and all these types of things that uh can cause a lot of issues in a neighborhood so uh but i would like to hear the other side of the story before i cast ultimate canadian judgment on these people <laughs> Yeah, it for now it will remain a mystery, but there's another mystery that a listener named Angela wants to bring us, and this one I think it's um it's definitely something we got to consider and talk about because this is a bit of a mystery or maybe at least a question related to Robin's Donuts and um, the variety of items they sell across Canada. This is an interesting one. Listen to what uh, what our correspondent Angela has to say. Hi, Jordan and Aaron. This is Angela from Regina. Jordan, I had called in before um, on Encounters with Creeps, and I was the one that tried to correct you on your pronunciation of Saskatchewan. I see that you haven't taken and applied my feedback, but that's fine. I will keep listening. Um, I actually just wanted to chat about the Robin's Donuts thing. So one thing that I'd be interested in hearing about from listeners is the menu at their Robin's Donuts. So as I mentioned, I live in Regina and I've noticed the Robin's that I go to has bubble tea on their menu. And I think that either we've got a rogue Robin's Donuts in Regina or there's a possibility that 
the Robin's Donuts franchise owners are allowed to slightly change their menu. So I'd be curious to hear from other listeners if their Robin's Donuts sells things that seem, I guess, just kind of out of the ordinary. Thanks, guys. Keep up the great show. <laughs> she got attacked by a dog and killed at the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so I'll address it in the order she presented it. She wants me to say Saskatchewan. And not Saskatchewan. I, even Angela, even if I try to do it right, I'll forget it. Uh, my grammar and pronunciation and all that stuff is so bad. You're fighting a losing battle. Saskatchewan's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. It's You're too deep into your ignorance, man. You'll never... <laughs> But she, I've always she, said Saskatchewan as well. I, that's how yeah. I thought it was pronounced. Yeah. But either way, she's over. She's like, that's fine. I'll still listen. I'll that's still not, listen. Uh, yeah. She's not drawing yeah. a line in the sand, so I'm happy. Uh, mm-hmm. But let's get to the meat and potatoes or of her voicemail there. Is, um, what she asks is like she'd like to hear from other listeners about something unique being sold at their Robin's Donuts that maybe the others aren't carrying. Like, for example, there's one Robin's in Cape Breton that does like a full dine-in diner breakfast where, you know, you can get like straight up bacon, scrambled eggs, toast, hash browns, and, you know, the whole meal. Um, and they don't give it through the drive through You can only eat it when you dine in there. Okay. But the other Robins in this area don't do that. Cool. Um, yeah. So it's like, yeah, the, the Robins can switch it up a bit. They have the flexibility, the creativity, the inspiration, and the motivation to be individuals. And that's why we support them so proudly. And, uh, you know, I still haven't slept since we got a little negative feedback about Robbins in a voicemail last week, and uh, it still bothers me. Um, I'm still enraged about it. And, the brand uh, muffin, yeah. Yeah, I hardly have any drywall left in my home because I've punched it all through. Aaron, we got another voicemail from a correspondent named Leo, who is going to kickstart the final story. I I love when we get story recommendations from listeners, but I especially love when they come in the form of a voicemail, which you can send to us if something weird is happening in your neck of the woods by going to nighttimepodcast.com slash contact, like a listener, a Keep Canada Weird correspondent named Leo did. He wants to let us know about a story going on in his part of the country listen to what's happening in barry my name is leo Uh, i'm from barry ontario and uh there's some i don't know i'd call it more wild than weird uh going on there's always something weird going on in this town but uh there's this girl uh she's a bridal photographer and she has scammed women all over ontario out of over three hundred thousand dollars in total um, for bridal photography and then like not showing up to the weddings and stuff like that. Um, there's an article on CTV about it. If you search that up, like Barry bridal photographer, uh, it'll come up and it'll give you more details cause it's crazy. Anyways, uh, take care guys. Love your podcast. We listen every week. It shows the great side, weird side of our country. Uh, yeah. So bye. Thank you, Leo. Uh, I was interested. I, there was a time where I wanted to be a photographer as a profession. I remember those days, actually. Yeah, you carried a camera around. This is before cell phone cameras were common or anything like that. Yeah. You always carried a little camera around with you all the time. and It wasn't a little camera. I often had my backpacks. I'd have, like, sometimes I'd bring multiple lenses and everything. We're talking about the, the actual physical film era. And I mm. have like so much of that era, like our 20s, documented and I have a, like a big bin in my back room of negatives of film that if you ever run for prime minister, Aaron, you're going to want to burn that. Mm. Um, But I was interested in this story. I did some looking into it and uh, it's definitely something we got to talk about. You remember we talked about that Christmas fair whose organizer um, ended up like stealing all the money and I think they were gambling it. And then it led left to all the, Christmas craft fair um, dealers just kind of out in the dark. They had nowhere to sell their stuff. And you you remember that whole situation, right? Yeah, I think about it every day. (laughs) 
Well, something similar happened in this story. Um, instead of a Christmas fair, though, it's a bunch of weddings that got botched. Here's, here's the clip that I found. Listen to this situation. I had found myself tangled up in a community of other brides who were going through the same thing that we were going through. Missed deadlines, missing photos, broken promises, threats of suicide. Brides like Jade Mark coming forward to tell their stories, saying it appears they've been scammed by Barry photographer Jacqueline Poole Montesano. She was great up until we paid. Uh, after that, she kind of went radio silent, ghosted us. Mark saying she and dozens of other brides, their partners and photographers have been taken for tens of thousands of dollars. Andrew Perrins had worked for the Barry photographer for years and says this year, Things went sideways. I'm currently out about $3,600 myself. From the amount of vendors, I guess, that we've uh, amassed and talked to right now, we're just over $30,000. Photographers and newlyweds saying they're in disbelief. Pool Montesano has blamed health issues, telling customers she's struggling to keep up and meet deadlines. What she is doing is really unfortunate and cruel. In some cases, brides say they've had their photos held hostage. She has taken our wedding album offline and is refusing to give it back to us unless we put in writing that she did not breach our contract. So we're currently being blackmailed by her in order to receive our photos. She was also very quick to let us know that if we paid the full amount up front, uh, that she would give us extra money off of our package. Mark says despite paying Jacqueline in full a year prior to her wedding day, she's received nothing in return including an engagement photo shoot that still hasn't taken place. With little to no response in weeks, now Jade is scrambling to find a photographer for her wedding next month. Once I started to question if I would receive my photos on time within the three-month deadline that was outlined in her contract that she wrote, I was ghosted. Many of the brides say they found Jacqueline through Instagram ads for her company, Pink Champagne Photography, that offered engagement and wedding photo packages at great prices. The average deal, about $4,000. Trying to find answers and nothing is really coming about. Bride Gisela Sarmiento says Jacqueline has threatened self-harm online and in emails and messages to brides before blocking their phone calls and locking them out from her social media accounts. For somebody to just say this out loud and put blame on so many people that were affecting her and were the ones making her go through this. She's really not thinking about her clients. If she really wants to tell me that she loves her job, she loves her clients, this is not proof of that. This is the opposite. It really hurts me to see this going on. So yeah, I really, uh, it's a horrible situation. When contacted by CTV News, her legal representative, Lawrence Pomfret, says due to physical illness and subsequent mental illness, she is unable to provide any substantive comment at this time. You are creating a situation on people's happiest day of their life that makes it somewhat of a traumatic experience and no couple should have to go through this. What you're doing is wrong, what you're doing is criminal, and your actions will catch up to you. The brides and vendors we've spoken with hoping to hear soon from Jacqueline Poole Montesano to settle up and have their photographs returned to them. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know if I should say it's our second scam story of the night, but it, so it's, it's something between scam and just really poor management of a business, I guess mm -hmm. is how I would describe that. But I, I'm just, I feel like if she has like the ability to get legal representation and all this, why wouldn't she have just gotten someone to like manage the closing of the business for a period of time. Like they, there, there should be someone who can like help settle these accounts, get the photos out to people. Maybe they're not edited properly or something at this point, but I just feel like that would maybe be just as easy as getting legal representation. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Um, I, I think it would depend on the, I don't know. It's, I, this one is, is, is a little hard to give a full opinion on because if she really is very, very sick. But you, then, do, you gotta shut yeah, you like you can't go to work. You can't work, you can't sit there and go to events and you know, go to photo shoots and edit and all the things that you need to be able to do. Um 
Yeah. It's and 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 wedding photos unfortunately fall under the category of uh I don't care. <laughs> oh yeah, There's, there are <laughs> certain know, issues where you just can't bring yourself. There's certain issues where I just I actually don't care about that. But so. but the $4,000 uh, I agree. I agree. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. It's a lot of money. I, I also um, think this stuff is tacky. I'm not one for a lot of the I don't know, these sort of weird traditions like Mm -hmm. like this uh yeah I, I don't like it four yeah grand yeah at the of end money. of the day it's like okay you know I, I i got ripped off of my wedding photo money and i think um i'll just get a friend to take some photos and they won't be great but we'll have some a cool story to tell for you know our special day but yeah it's just it's it's again like i i i don't want to see anybody lose their money and not get a service that they paid for i just want to state that for the record but it it's again when it there were there are certain things that that i just can't care about and that's and okay, weddings is one, is one of them <laughs> yeah i just uh, there's, but, not, there's nothing i can do about that yeah and if you take out i guess the the business of wedding photography uh you can just kind of generalize it by saying if you're going to spend a bunch of money on something make sure it's a reputable company if it's like you know an independent thing like this maybe look for references and such but just because someone has a nice instagram profile uh, maybe mm -hmm. not enough to justify like relying on them for your most specialist of days and your four thousand uh, dollar photographs or whatever uh, i feel bad for these people but i'm glad leo stepped up and did the task a Keep Canada Weird correspondent has to do and let us know when something like this is happening in his neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, let's give her the benefit of the doubt and assume that she is actually ill and and hope that she gets better. Yeah, and, 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 and sure, she probably could have handled it better, but um, maybe she was hoping that she could still maintain the business and still work. And then maybe it, it was all crumbling at the seams. Um, you know, so let's have some sympathy there, but I certainly hope that the people get their money back or get their photos or get whatever they need. I, I do hope that. Let me just ask you before we get into the final segment here, are you okay? Or do you think you have the capacity to get into something controversial, maybe to hear something negative about you and I. Oh, are I, is she going to say something bad about you? I hope not. But I will tell okay. you, Diane, despite hating our show and, well, specifically hating you, she didn't have mm. much bad to say about me. She still listened and she heard us uh, react to the the vitriol that she sent in in that voicemail last week. And uh, she had a little more to say. Um, okay. You, you want to hear? I actually got two <laughs> voicemails from Diane. You want to hear uh, them? Yeah, yeah. Double trouble. Bring it on. The first one here. And they came okay. back to back. Here's the first one. <laughs> of course they did. Hey, Diane here again. I guess I need to apologize for being so vocal. But that being said, I do listen to a few different podcasts. And I think Stuff You Should Know is such a better podcast than yours because they deal with facts. And you guys, I just didn't understand, just made fun of stuff and criticized it. And you didn't even know what agriculture was. Oh. Just some stuff you guys just are ignorant mm -hmm. of. So... I just wanted to shout out to your fans. They might want to check it out. Awesome. <laughs> I have tears on my eyes. I just think it's so funny. Oh, my God. It's so good. But we knew what agriculture was. We didn't know what an ag city was. We didn't know what, yeah, when there's like, we're an ag town. An ag town. We're an ag town. <laughs> like, oh, they sell eggs there. Okay. Yeah. That's an, that's an innocent mistake. And But the thing is, is we celebrate our ignorance. We do it all the time on this show. Um, so... If you're coming to the egg market and you get mad that they gave you eggs, then that's your problem. Um, I just find it hilarious that she hates it, but that's a callback to like, when was the whole egg gate thing? That was, that was months and months ago, like six months ago. Um, and she said last week in that 
voicemail complaining about me was that she's not going to listen anymore. Mm. So clearly she kept listening because she <laughs> heard, us, heard us air her voicemail on the show. Uh, so she sent that voicemail. 15 minutes later, I got another one from her. This one's this I one's hope it's good. that she found another podcast she likes. <laughs> just wants to recommend others. No, this one's bad. Yeah. This one's good. Yeah. I just tried to check out your page. I don't see no pictures. I don't see no names. I'm just saying. <laughs> mm. uh, there, there is photos of you and I on my on nighttimepodcast.com, so I don't know what what it is other than she's just suspicious that maybe she had a hard time finding photos of you, but yeah. Well, maybe she should listen to an episode on stuff. You should know that explains to her how to find pictures on websites. <laughs> I did write to Diane before we went to air tonight. I wrote her an email and I said, actually, let me just read it just for full transparency and what's going on here. Cause maybe she'll respond next week. We'll see what I said to her is, Hi, Diane. This is Jordan from Keep Canada Weird. I'm also a fan of Josh and Chuck at Stuff You Should Know. I'd like to send you a picture of Aaron to check out, and perhaps you could send a voicemail letting him know what you think of the photo. If you're okay with that, send me your mailing address, and I'll send you a picture of Aaron and some Keep Canada Weird stickers that you can either use, tear up, or just throw straight in the, cha in the trash. All the best, Jordan. And at the time mm -hmm. of airing, we're airing this Tuesday night at it's about 10 o'clock local time now. I have not heard back from her. And did you send her the picture of me already? No, because I don't want to, if I do it, I want to make it, I want to send her one in the mail. In the mail. Oh yeah. Okay. I like that. That's why I asked for a mailing address. I I'd would like, like some her... input creatively into what picture you send though. I would like it to be a photo taken just for her. Okay. Like this is my Diane photo. <laughs> well, we'll see if she gets back. I, she obviously listens, um, so we'll see. I don't think this is the end of this, though. So, Diane, bring it on. Keep it coming. Yeah, we we love your voicemails. They've been very entertaining. Um, and I'd like to hear more from her. And just as I would like Diane to see a photo of me, I would like to see a photo of Diane. Oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. So see if, we if can you make have that a happen. website and if I can figure out how to see photos on your website, <laughs> I would love to go to it and see photos of you. Well, I think we've done it tonight. We've been through it all. We've heard from haters. We heard some from so, someone who seems to have a crush on you. We covered a lot of great. That was anonymous. anonymous. Her name is anonymous. And she means everything to you. Well, we're getting married and we found this really great photographer that we just, uh, <laughs> I just sent her $4,000 and we're going to get engagement photos done, me and anonymous. And, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the finished photos. And maybe those are the photos that I will send to Diane. Mm. Well, we've done it. We can put a bow on this. Uh, let's wrap this up. Handsome Aaron airport until next time. Jordan until next time. I Great luck with the photos. Hopefully they turn around quick and everything is, you know, you're both like kind of like laying in the grass with the sun setting behind you. And maybe it's even a little like, like blurry behind you. I hope the photos come out great. Yeah. And Jordan, until next time, uh, unfortunately, Keep Canada Weird is getting a new co-host. You'll be being removed from your spot on Keep Canada Weird and Anonymous will be taking over and we're going to be a husband and wife duo podcasters oh. that will no longer be keeping Canada weird. will be keeping Canada romantic mm. and, uh, Diane will actually officiate our wedding. Mm, I like it. I want to thank you for helping Aaron and I fulfill our mission to keep Canada weird. But if any one of you listening want to contribute even more, we need all the correspondence we can get. If something weird happens in your area, or if you have any thoughts, theories, or opinions on anything we discussed tonight, we want to hear about it. The best way to reach us is by sending a voice message using the voice recorder that can be found at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. We're excited to hear from you. Now, I'm going to start wrapping this episode up, but before we part, 
I want to end with some thanks. First, a big thanks to Aaron for another great evening with me and with you, the listeners of Keep Canada Weird. A big shout out to Unicole, the internet's favorite cult leader, who provides our intro and outro voiceovers. Monty Data, who provides the outro version of O Canada. And then lastly, but most importantly, a massive thank you goes out to each and every one of you listening, as without your interest and your support, this show wouldn't be possible. Now on the topic of support, let me thank the newest subscribers to the premium feed. Don, Dave, and Jennifer, thank you for going premium. And for anyone else who'd like to support the show that way, a premium feed subscription costs just a couple bucks a month, and that money funds the creation of new episodes. But the premium feed gives you those episodes two days early, gives them to you ad-free, and gives you access to a full back catalog of episodes. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can go premium at nighttimepodcast.com slash subscribe. And if supporting the show via the premium feed isn't for you, you can simply share these episodes on social media and let all your like-minded friends know why they should listen. Your support means everything. And until next time, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, and let us know if you see anything weird. Keep Canada Weird is written, hosted, and produced by the Nighttime Podcast. And now to our viewers and listeners everywhere. Good night. One last thing to do. Normally we're, we're ending with like kind of the story of the night, but I think you brought up an idea earlier, the hero of the week. We're going, we're going to give someone an award here. You, you, you wanted it to be the owner of the compost yard. Mm-hmm. Did anyone outdo themselves? We have the person who was scammed for Taylor Swift, uh, but for the 1400 bucks. Yeah, she's, Swift she's tickets. no hero. She's no uh, hero. So the, the compost guy or the people who had the meat falling on their property, uh, the mm-hmm. wedding photographer and the victims of their either scam or bad business practice. Um, the uh, the neighbors next to the unfinished home. Or the no owners of there. the on unfo- or the owners of the unfinished home are like your laws don't apply to me. Well, once we he- yeah, well you know certainly there's some integrity there, but. Um, we just don't know enough about their story yet to call them heroes. So I think, you know, after going through the list, it has to be uh, the Canadian compost king. Yeah. And you know what? In contrast to the wedding photographer, he shows how to run a business. He can take criticism on the chin and yeah. it only makes him stronger. Love it.